I got to bring in News Nation correspondent Brooke Schaefer. She's live in Hugoton, Kansas, trying to sort all of this out tonight. Brooke, why is everyone being so secretive when there are two women missing and endangered? Yeah, it's definitely not something that I think we were expecting when we came here. We were expecting, you know, you've got two moms missing. They've been missing since Saturday. Um, and we were really hoping to talk to the families. Um, you know, I can say I've talked to uh, the aunt of Veronica. I talked to her on Facebook yesterday, and she was very kind and, and responding to me, but she told me that they've been asked not to talk or that she couldn't talk until she got permission from investigators. Um, and today we've been sort of just walking around here in Hugoton, Kansas. Uh, it's a very, very small town. Only about 3,000 people live here, a little bit more than that. But um, so it's a town where everybody knows everybody. Um, and we've just been walking into shops, Ashley, and talking to people here. And everybody knows these two women. Uh, some people have been willing to chat with us off camera, but other people have kind of pushed us away, even family members of some of these women. Um, I think really a lot of it comes down to there's a lot of fear here. There's a lot of concern. Nobody really has any That's answers uh, as to where these two yeah, moms you are. You know what? Can I ask you, because I'm looking at the scene behind you, Brooke, and normally when we do stories like this, um, an intrepid reporter like you will show up and there'll be yellow ribbons on the street lamps and there'll be all yeah. sorts of vigils. And I'm seeing a completely desolate street scene behind you. And I have heard, and you'll have to, you know, disabuse me of this if I'm wrong, I've heard that you were not treated particularly well. And that shocks me because I would think that everybody would be clamoring for media attention to help find these women, find their neighbors. Yeah, I heard that they did have a vigil uh, earlier this week. I want to say on Monday, one of the churches out here had a vigil. Um, and some shops down here have the sign, uh, the missing poster with the pictures of these two women and their information on it. But yeah, we went into a, a shop of a relative of one of these women and they kind of were just like, nope, 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 no media. And, you know, like I said, to a degree, I, I do understand it, right? I mean, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of concern. And if investigators are saying, hey, hold off on chatting with the media, they probably don't want to do anything to potentially to potentially damage the, the case, right? I think really so much of it comes down to there is a lot of concern here, a lot of worry about where these women are. But beyond that, too, Ashley, I was talking with the woman uh, a few doors down from here. Um, this is Veronica's shop, by the way, a uh, shop here sort of downtown uh, Hugoton, Kansas. So I talked to a woman in a restaurant uh, just a couple doors down. She said that Veronica would come in all the time for lunch or dinner to grab some food. Um, and she said, you know, we're really concerned because we're not really getting a whole lot of information. And she's like, I'm a mom. I've got kids. You know, I drive these roads all the time. They're very rural, desolate areas. Your cell signal's going in and out. She's like, do I need to be worried? So, you know, today when we talked to investigators and we got that update that they suspect foul play, I called investigators right away to try and figure out, you know, what was that evidence that you found in the car? They couldn't answer that. But beyond that, too, like, can you give us any information? Because we've got people in this town who are worried, rightfully so. What was the connection between Veronica, the younger mom, going to get her kids, and yeah. Jillian, the older woman. Like, what, what's the story between them? Yeah, so first, when we got here, we talked to Veronica's pastor. He told us that the two were really more acquaintances than friends. That's what had been reported initially, that they were friends in the car. He said, really, they're more acquaintances. So we digged into that a little bit more. And from what we are told from people here in town, uh, Jillian worked for DCF. And she was an approved uh, person who could go along for these supervised visits. So that's what she was doing in the car as they were going to go visit uh, Veronica's children. Okay. Then the other thing I'm surprised at, Brooke, and I've got a, a lozenge in, so I apologize to the viewers, but Veronica is remarried. Like, she's got a current husband. And I would have, mm -hmm. again, thought that if your wife is missing... You are taking to the microphone anyone yeah. who will hear your plea to help find my wife. But I haven't seen hide nor yeah. hair of him. What's his story? Yeah, you know, we talked to a couple people again here in town. We've just really been kind of going door to door trying to get some information from people. And we heard from one woman that it was Veronica's husband who really kind of sounded the alarm that, you know, these two women didn't come back into town when they were supposed to. And he got really concerned. Um, and according to this one woman here in town, she said that Veronica's husband was the one who started sort of driving that route, trying to find them. 
and uh, apparently he's the one who found their car just abandoned on the side of the road. Um, but yeah, pretty quiet um, from the family. We're not really hearing a whole lot from them other hey, than, bro. you know, they've had some posts on social media. Yeah. So speaking of that car real quickly, just 30 seconds left here. Uh, the evidence yeah. that indicates oh, foul yeah. play. Do we, I know they're not, the police aren't saying what it is, but are there, is there talk out there of mm -hmm. what the heck was in that car that made them say foul play? There is definitely talk. The rumor mill is definitely going. Again, small town, everybody knows everybody. From what I'm hearing from people here in town, they've heard that there was maybe blood um, around the abandoned car. Again, we have not been able to confirm that information on our own because police aren't releasing that. I even pressed him. I asked that exact question today. I said, we're hearing there was maybe blood. Is that the evidence? Uh, so far, investigators aren't saying. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.